Revision all arthroscopic Eden Hibernae procedure. 25 year old right handed male presented to our clinic with recurrent instability of his left shoulder. He originally sustained a traumatic dislocation at the age of 17 and subsequently undergone an arthroscopic bank art repair. This has failed and he then underwent what we presume was an open coracoid transfer. Unfortunately, within six weeks this had failed and he became a recurrent dislocator again. He went underwent a further open procedure, but unfortunately this really made no difference. When we saw him in the clinic, he had had four years of recurrent instability. A plain AP x-ray showed evidence of three retained metal anchors and evidence of what looked like a loose washer. The axial view confirmed the presence of the loose anchors and the washers and was suspicious of the tip of the coracoid that had perhaps uh, torn off of the repair. A coronal CT cut through the glenoid confirmed the presence of the three anchors, but around these a number of bone voids, which we suspect may have represented bioabsorbable anchors that were used at some point. There's also evidence of a screw hole in the upper quadrant of the glenoid, which does look a little high. An axial cut again shows evidence of the previous anchors, but shows the extent of the bone voids surrounding them. Taking into account that the patient had had three previous procedures for which we had no records and the fact his shoulder is unstable, we decided the most appropriate course of action would be to proceed to initial diagnostic arthroscopy to assess his joint further. Diagnostic arthroscopy. This is the patient's diagnostic arthroscopy and we can see the loose sutures from his previous anchors and evidence of probable plication suture within subscapularis. Using a far lateral portal, we took down the rotator interval tissue on the top of subscapularis to expose the coracoid stump. There's a cord like structure protruding from this, but on further dissection with the diathermy, there was a violent contracture which appeared to be nerve like. We considered the anatomy to be abnormal and uh, did not dissect any further. Clearing off the front of the glenoid, we could see a nubbins of bone which we suspected was the remnant of the coracoid tip. In the inferior recess, we found what looked like the uh, retained washer, which actually had a suture around it, and we removed this. Due to the patient's history, clinical findings, and abnormal anatomy that we found on diagnostic arthroscopy, we decided to proceed to an all arthroscopic bone block Eden Hibernate procedure using a suture button technique. The bone block for this procedure can be either an autograft or allograft. We prefer to use an autograft. Because we'd previously undertaken a diagnostic arthroscopy and the screw had already been removed from this patient, we took our bone block at the beginning of the procedure. Had this not been the case, we'd have undertaken an initial arthroscopy, removed the screw and then taken the bone block and then gone back to the shoulder. The tricortical graft is cut to size, it's 20 millimetres long, 10 millimetres wide and 10 millimetres deep. It's then placed in a specific cl clamp and two 2.8 millimetre drill holes are then uh, drilled through a jig 10 millimetres apart. Two suture buttons are then loaded into the bone block. The bone block is delivered into the shoulder through a 15 millimetre anterior portal cannula. Having prepared the block and loaded the sutures, the block is then pulled through the cannula to check that it will pass through freely. The suture button system uses a jigged drill guide to drill two holes from posterior to anterior. With this system, it is possible to pre-plan the position of the holes to avoid the metalwork. To pre-plan the guide position, we took an axial cut at the anterior edge of the glenoid. The jig is offset at 4mm and we dropped a line uh, vertically from the edge of the glenoid 4mm in. The outer drill diameter is 2.8mm and the drill holes are 10mm apart. We chose a position for our two drill holes that would bypass the metalwork. The midpoint between these two drill holes where the tip of the jig would sit was 11 millimetres from the inferior edge of the glenoid. Revision all arthroscopic Eden Hibernate procedure. 
Viewing from a far lateral portal with the Burr introducer and anterior portal, the glenoid is prepared. When prepared the glenoid anteriorly, a split cannula is introduced through the posterior portal, pushed inferiorly, and then the drill guide can be inserted. Drill guide is positioned 11 millimetres from the inferior edge of the glenoid and is 4 millimetres medial. The drill guide and sleeve are then inserted from front to back. Drill guide is then removed and the drills taken out of the outer sleeve. The split anterior we are now viewing from the posterior portal is increased so that we can introduce the 50 mm cannula through the anterior portal through which the bone block is going to be inserted. Viewing from the lateral portal, two PDS shuttle sutures are passed from posterior through the drill sleeves. The superior the shuttle is attached to the lead suture of the superior uh, bone block suture anchor and the sutures are then pulled through posteriorly. Having pulled the superior through, the inferior one is then pulled through. It's very important to try and avoid any tangles and so we use a probe to keep the sutures apart. Pulling on the anterior or the superior portal bone block is then pulled into the joint and manipulated into position with the probe. The sutures at the back are then uh, tensioned uh, to 150 newtons and the posterior suture buttons attached and fixed into place. At the end of the procedure a strong fixation has been obtained and the anterior lead sutures are removed. Viewing again from the anterior Far lateral portal, we can see there's a slight lateral overhang of the bone block, and using the burr, we can carefully burr this back flush to the articular surface. At the end of the procedure, we can see the bone block is positioned nicely in the lower to mid quadrant and is flush to the articular surface.